Hey, what's up guys? So here's a real fast method that I've been using for years. I've talked about it before and it's just so effective uh, for increasing like the highlight element of skin tone, right? There's so many different ways to go potentially go about doing it, but this is one way that I really, really like. So for example, I have like a boudoir themed shot here. I've got some nice skin tones and some highlights, but let's say I want a little bit more shaping on those highlights. So First of all, we need a mask, ideally, so we don't have to increase, um, you know, highlight anywhere else on the image. We need a mask and a subject mask is obviously the way to go, but a skin tone mask is going to be more accurate. Now, in this case of uh, the shot of Lizzie here, the other areas of her, that is the hair and the lingerie are very dark colors and there's not going to be a whole lot of highlighting going on there. But nonetheless, we should get a skin tone mask. Now, there's different ways to go about doing that, but I do recommend not just because it's our product, but I do recommend using SKN because the bottom left button right here on the panel, if you tap that, it'll use um, Photoshop's AI for subject selection and then NBP's skin tone search function. And look at that. We have a perfect skin tone selection. So I do recommend SKN. At the end of this video, I'll show you some options on how to select skin quickly, but manually. It's not quite as quick as SKN, but it still works. So I have a selection here. Now, let's say I go to, there's a couple different ways we can do this, but I'm going to start with curves. Okay. Let's go to a curves. I'm going to change the blend mode to luminosity to minimize color shifting. Let's look at the mask real quick. Look at that, great mask. Now, I'm gonna double click the right side of the curves layer because I'm doing what we love to do, which is blend if. Now, right here, we're gonna worry about the bottom one. So I'm gonna hold down alter option. I'm gonna split this dark node all the way to the right. And then I'm gonna take it to, I don't know, roughly here. That means I want the effect of the curve to only be in this luminosity range, slowly blending away in this area and blending to more visibility to the right. We probably will adjust that. But for now, there it is. Luminosity blend mode. Here's our curve. Let's see what happens. We brighten. And look at that. See that? We're just brightening the highlights. See that? So let's turn that off and on off and on. See, that adds a ton of shape. And because we wanted the contrast in the shot, or rather I wanted the contrast in the shot, but I wanted her to be a little brighter. I didn't want to just brighten her arbitrarily, do a subject selection and just brighten. I wanted the shadows to remain. This does that. It gives her more presence, more depth, obviously, because of the light shaping, but it doesn't you know, uh, overdo it. It doesn't kill the contrast. It preserves that depth that I really wanted while enhancing shaping. I really like that. Now I mentioned we could do it a couple of different ways. Let's um, reset the curves there. Let's put a levels on here and we'll put that on luminosity blend mode. You can do this with curves, but I'm gonna hold down alter option and copy the mask over, double click the right side and kind of recreate, hold down option or alt, split the node, kind of recreate the uh, blend if. And then now I have a couple different options here. If I use the brightening node on the right, I can do that very, very similarly. But of course, with curves, I mean, excuse me, um, with levels, you can kind of ruin this and blow out that too high, right? But sometimes you want that. Sometimes, and again, you can do it with curves, but sometimes, like if I have specular highlights on wet skin, right? Whether it's a swimwear shot or a shiny, oily shot of a fitness shot, uh, sometimes you want blown out specular highlights a little bit, a little bit. And that's where sometimes I will pull out curves as opposed to, excuse me, I'll pull out levels instead of curves um, because sometimes I want to increase that bright point to a little bit of a, an overly done maximum. And sometimes that can look really cool, right? So let's delete these. Now, how do we make a skin tone mask quickly on our own? There's a couple different ways. One, we can go select subject, which of course is our first line of defense, right? And then we can immediately go back to select and go to color range, and then we can choose skin tones. Now, for the most part, um, on a shot like this, the Photoshop skin tone selector is probably gonna be pretty successful. There really is only one color on the whole image and that's skin tone. So it's pretty, pretty clear. Detect faces probably won't make a difference, no. So that's pretty straightforward. We got a little bit of hair, but that's not the end of the world. So. Uh, on other type of selections, it could be more difficult. Uh, and that's where SKN really wins. And actually, while I'm here, I'm going to show you another, another method. But let me go ahead and see what this mask looks like with our setup that we described. Something like that. Let's see. Oh, yeah, that works fantastically well. And that was just using Photoshop's tools. So that's, that's, that's fantastic. I think that worked great. Um, now, as for creating a more, uh, you know, a more accurate skin tone mask, this is what I recommend. Let's go ahead and put a solid color, not a gradient, you know, but a solid color. And we're going to put that on, it doesn't matter, but 50% gray is usually what I do. We're going to switch that to luminosity and that is chroma on gray. Okay. We're going to leave that for the moment. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to flatten it. Sometimes it just works a little bit more 
seamless. So I'm gonna flatten to new layer. There's our chroma. Turn that off for the moment. Go back here, go to select, uh, select subject I should say. Once it finishes, then we turn on our chroma and go to that layer and go to color range. And now skin tone, even at lower settings, is a lot cleaner. See how there's no, none of the highlights are missing. The hair is still not quite right, but the hair is a lot better and we still have a nice hard edge. And that's where chroma data comes in. So there you go, we got that done. And now we can pull our chroma layer to the trash and go about our business like we were. Okay, I'll go ahead and set it up again. I don't know why, just because roughly there. And now we brighten and there it is. See that? So, you know, you can save that step. Like I said, if you have SKN, you can run SKN and do the same process because the highlight enhancing function that SKN has is similar to that, but just a lot more flexible um, and of course integrated. So all the other looks come together with it. But when you just want to enhance the highlights only, everything else is fine. You click this button down here in the bottom left of SKN. It automatically does the chroma process. It actually does the white chroma process, which is even more accurate. And your masks end up really, really quite nice. So if you look at this mask, you'll see it's almost like a vector mask. Really, really beautiful. So anyway, don't forget, blend if using curves, ideally uh, you use curves and you pull up on a curve, then you have a minimal chance. See, that's the whole image. We don't want that. That's a good example. I shouldn't mean to do that, but let's look at that real quick. There it is brightened on normal blend mode. Eh, it looks terrible. So we switch it to luminosity blend mode, still too bright. We come over here, we get our blend diff and look at that. That is how we enhance contouring and shaping of an image while preserving contrast and making that skin just look really rich and, and dynamic. That That is why we do this. So don't forget, blend diff, curves if you don't want to blow out the highlights, potentially curves if you want to blow out the highlights, but levels if you really want to blow out the highlights. Don't forget, um, use SKN because it's going to be a lot simpler for a skin tone mask, but you absolutely can do it manually. Just a simple function that's so powerful and it can be applied to so much, not just skin. But since I work with a lot of skin in my work, uh, shaping, light shaping and enhancing already existing light shaping is a big priority. So those are some thoughts for today. Yeah.